So now that we know how to collect the first name and the last name and a password of a user, what we need to do is pass that information on to Active Directory. To do this, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is import a module. So we're gonna make a comment here and say import required modules. And the command that we're gonna to need to use is import dash module and it's called Active Directory. All right, and that's all we need to do for that. Now we have the Active Directory module. Now, if you're not on a domain controller or you don't have RSAT installed, you're gonna get an error at this point. Okay, so we'll just run the code and make sure we don't get an error. Paul Hill uh, test password. Okay, I spelled that wrong, that's fine. Your full name is, t is Paul Hill, your password is test password. No, no errors, and that's because I'm on a domain controller. What we need to do now is find out where do we want to store the user in Active Directory? Because if we just try to create the account, it's not gonna know where to store it, and we're not gonna be able to successfully create a user account. Specifying the desired OU is a required argument for the command. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's create a new comment, and we're gonna say specify where to store the user account. And we're gonna make a new variable, and we're gonna call it OU path equals. And then we're gonna have an open quotation mark. We're not gonna make this a read host. And the reason for that is that the OU path is not very easy to type in and it's really easy to mess up on. So we're gonna set this to a variable that's not really gonna change unless you want to change it yourself in the code. Now here's how you find the OU path. It's not as simple, it's not like a file structure where it'd be like C drive backslash, you know, test backslash, uh, you know, IT flea or something like that. It's actually more complicated. So what we're gonna do is open server manager and then we're gonna pop into Active Directory. So I'm gonna select tools, go up to the top here, Active Directory users and computers. Now we need to turn on the advanced view. So what I'm gonna do is click view and advanced features. So we'll click this drop down. I'm gonna create a new organizational unit for the PowerShell users. I'm gonna uncheck it from protect from accidental deletion. And we'll call this PowerShell users. And we'll click okay. Now to find the path to this OU, we need to right click on it and choose properties. And go into the attribute editor. And down here on the, near the top of the attributes, you can see there is the distinguished name. If we double click on this distinguished name, this is the path that we need to specify in the PowerShell script, okay? It kind of works backwards. It starts with com, then it flea dot, then PowerShell users. So it kind of goes from right to left and what you'd expect. If I create a new organizational unit underneath this, just for demonstration purposes, I'll uncheck protect and we'll call this uh, test OU. If I look at the attributes of this, we'll see that it's again going from right to left. So com, it flea dot, PowerShell users, and then test. So the deeper you go, the, the further it is on the left. So we'll cancel out of this, and I'm just gonna delete this organizational unit. And we're gonna go back to PowerShell users, and under the attribute editor, I'm gonna double click on the distinguished name. Now we're gonna copy this value. So select the whole thing and just copy it, and hit okay, then hit cancel, and we'll minimize Active Directory. You can leave that open because we'll be coming back to it later. Now under OU path, we're just gonna paste this path in there, and we'll click in quotation marks. Now I think by looking at this, you can, ex you can see why I wouldn't want you to type this in yourself. It's a little bit confusing, all right? So the next thing we need to do is secure the password. You can't just hand a variable into Active Directory and expect it to process it. It needs to be secure. But to do that, it's very, very simple. All we need to do is create a new password and call it secure password. And that is gonna be equal to convert to dash secure string. And the string that we're gonna be converting is password, the one that we're specifying up here by the read host. And then we're gonna say as plain text and force. This will make sure that it goes through without any issues. Again, we need to add a comment up here and say, convert the password to a secure string. If it's not a secure string, it will not work. You'll get an error. At this point, we're ready to create the user account. Now to do this, we're gonna use the new-ad user command. Now this command has a bunch of arguments that we're gonna to need to specify. 
And to start, we're going to specify the name. And that is going to be, in quotation marks, first name, and then last name. Okay, so we're doing quotation marks and then the variable first name space in the variable last name. All right, this is a required field. Next, we need to do the same thing over, which is a little bit silly, but it's the given name, which is going to be the first name. And we need to specify the surname, which is going to be the last name. It's kind of silly because we have to do the same thing twice, but that's just the way it is. What we need to specify now is the username that we're going to log in with. And that is specified with the argument username, or I'm sorry, user principal name. And this is going to be a combination of the first name dot last name because we haven't asked them to type in their desired username. We're just going to make it based off what their first name and last name is. So first name dot last name in quotation marks. Make sure you put in the quotation marks because we're combining two variables. Okay. All right, now we need to specify the path or where the user account should be created. So to do that, I'm just going to say OU path because we already figured that out right here. So we'll just use that variable. And I'll scroll over here a little bit. Now we need to specify the account password. So to do that, just type in dash account password. And make sure you do not use password because that is a not a secure string. So we're going to want to use secure password. Okay. And that, again, if you remember, is the variable that we set right here. Secure password, convert to secure string password. Okay, so we're using the secure password variable. And now we have two true or false settings that we need to set. The first is change password at logon. And we want to set this to true. So we're going to say dollar sign true. The reason why you want to set this is that if you're using a standardized password for every account that you create, like maybe you, you make all the accounts password one or something silly like that, and you're using a first dot last name username or a very standardized username system, which a lot of companies do, you don't want people using the same password you create their account with. And people will do it if you don't force a password change. So it wouldn't be hard for you know, an employee who got fired to come back and you know, maybe they see on someone's Facebook that, hey, I got, I got hired by company A, Y, A, B, C, whatever. It wouldn't be that hard for them to come back go to their computer, type in their first name, dot last name, and then that standardized password that you're handing out to everyone and get logged into the system. So make sure that you force people to change their passwords. The next thing we need to specify is whether or not the account is enabled. And we do that by hitting dash enabled. And we're going to set this to true. And we need to specifically say, I want this account to be enabled. And that will make it available immediately after the account has been created in PowerShell. All right, so we're ready to go. Let's hit the run script or press the F5 button. And now we're asked to enter our first name. We're going to type in Paul. Actually, I need to type in something different because Paul.Hill is already in use. So we're just going to call it John Jones. John Jones, why not? And now we need to type in a password. Now the password still has to meet Active Directory's complexity requirements. So you can't just type in something like test, all lowercase, or anything like that. I think it's something like one uppercase, one lowercase, one number, and one special. So, so I'm just going to type test. And then in lowercase password with a zero, R, D, and exclamation mark. So I have my at least one uppercase. I have a, at least one lowercase. I have at least one number and at least one special character. So now let's press enter and see what happens. So your full name is John Jones. Your password is test password, blah, blah. And that's really not a good idea to output in clear text. So you would want to get rid of that echo line, especially for the password. So let's go back to Active Directory and let's hit F5. And we can see that John Jones has been created. Now, if we go under account, we can see that the user logon name is john.jones. And if we go under general, we can see the first name is John, last name is Jones, etc. So now we have created this account. Let me show you, for example, if you tried to create it with no information. So if I just press enter through all of these and password, we're going to get an error saying, you know, the string's an empty string, blah, blah. It's not working. So 